everybody, and welcome back to today's show. Today we have, I am so beyond excited to introduce to you the incredible Jeannie Kim. She is a beacon of wisdom and light, and she offers healing guidance to clients worldwide. She's an intuitive reader, a 5D astrologer, a medium, and she teaches yogi, and she is a writer since 1999. Jeannie's passion lies in supporting others on their evolutionary journey towards deep authenticity, intuitive living, and holistic healing. So get ready to be inspired, guys, because we're in, she is ready, she is empowered, and she is uplifting as we dive into today's conversation about intuition, authentic living, and transformation role of the past lives into journey, into wholeness. So join us today as we embark on a journey of self-discovery, growth, spirituality, and enlightenment. So here it is, the famous, the greatest, the amazing Jeannie Kim. <laughs> Take it away. Tell everybody a little about yourself. Thank you, Stacey. <laughs> You're so funny. I love that. I, I'm going to listen to that daily. I'm going to re-record that. <laughs> I have myself all the time. Um, thank you so much. Well, uh, th first of all, thanks for having me here today. I so appreciate your amazing podcast and what you've grown and what you've done for everybody. So thank you. And uh, I am here today to hopefully shed some light on maybe the deeper versions of who we are and how we can embrace them with curiosity instead of maybe trepidation and fear. Right. And um, like you said, I've been doing this professionally since 1999. And prior to that, I was an IPO trader. <laughs> yep. Last seen in Chicago, uh, <laughs> and a little bit of California, but um, no, I brought my authentic self up and out with all my favorite things. And I went into the healing world and I, I just love it. I love it. Now, did you always know that you had the ability or did, did it come strong at a certain age? All of a sudden it started to really connect and you started to really feel your sixth sense. You know, it's, um, it did really make itself more apparent when I began to go to massage school because mm -hmm. I was around a bunch of people who could reflect it back to me. I had great teachers. I was doing, you know, I would do massage and they would say, oh, Janine, what are you seeing over there? <laughs> like, what, are, <laughs> what is that? And I, I you know, I was kind of like, it would freak me out a little. So I'm like, how do they know that I'm seeing something? And they would just really support me and entice mm -hmm. me. But I have to say that um, in hindsight, when I was five or six years old, even younger than that, I believe like maybe four or five, I had my first um, encounter with my intuitiveness and it was not taken well by my mom. It scared her a little bit. So yeah. I, I tucked it under, but it's been here all along. It's been here all along. I just had to pull it out in my later years. So did you, like, when you first started, did you, did you, did being a medium come on or did you first start to do just in, just start to do readings and it gracefully started to increase and enhance as time went along? How did it go, all start for you? It did. Like I, um, as I mentioned, I would get like dreams or, you know, hits that something was going to happen. And then these things would happen. And I would say, oh, that's wild. And, you know, in my financial world, I just kind of tucked it away. But meantime, I'm reading like Shirley MacLaine books, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and this is in the nineties, by the way. Yeah. 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 Doing tons of yoga. And I had this secret little world that was inside of me. And then I, you know, go to work the next day. <laughs> but when I got into um, the healing arts professionally and schooling and whatnot, it, it, the energy just started to flow in and I was intuitive, but I would also all of a sudden start to see the dead people, you know, people who had passed. And because my belief is everything is energy first, to me, it was just the fact that I was getting into that more subtle energetic groove. And so the people who were from beyond, the messages that were from beyond, I was starting to be able to delineate what that was in my life. And so it all kind of happened late 90s, early 2000s. Now, when people pass pass on, because really our whole world is run by energy. Our body is energy. Mm -hmm. So when we pass, our physical being 
rests and is, and deteriorates, but our energy is what rises up and, and what crosses over. So when you have these visualizations, are you seeing their energies and maybe a visualization through their energy, or are you just seeing the energies and you're getting messages from that energy coming into your head? That is a really great question. I, see, I, I interpret energy in so many of the clairs I smell, mm -hmm. I feel I uh, like a tangible touch, like yeah. right behind me, you know, or I, I sense it uh, yeah. with a feeling sense. Um, and then I hear and I see. And so when I work with people who pass, they come in different ways. And it, to me, it depends on uh, um, where they're at in their transformation process onto the other side, if that makes sense. Like yeah. some people maybe have just passed away a few days ago, but they come in crystal clear and they show me their form from when they were here, perhaps. Yeah. So then their, their loved ones can I have something to relate to when I give them specifics. Yeah. And then there's some people who may have been gone for a long time and couldn't cross over fully for whatever reason. So their energy is a little disjointed, if you will, yeah. or more nebulous, maybe mm -hmm. is a good word. And then you could feel them more as like a cloud. That's how I get it versus a clarity. And so I just help them put the words together a little bit better, but I could, because I get all the clairs, I know how to you know, navigate that and, and bring the message across. Right. You know, a lot of times they say, if you call out to the universe and you call out to people who have passed, they will come and they will answer. And a lot of times their energies, they'll give specific messages, either, like you said, through dreams, smell, maybe, you know, a lot of times people talk about pennies and they talk about ladybugs and cardinals and stuff like that to try to relay the messages because they physically can't touch you and, but they can use their energy to try to get across a message. Like, how do you feel about that? What's your intake? Absolutely. Without a doubt. I feel like, you know, there's a quote by Yates. I think it's Yates. It says, the world is full of magical things, patiently waiting for our wits to grow sharper. And so I feel like, you know, there's, when we trust that things come to us and that they are these messages, because we know somewhere in there that, oh my goodness, that's either a whole lot of synchronicity or <laughs> that was a message. And when we can trust that for ourselves, we, we allow ourselves to receive those gifts. Absolutely. Those gifts come. Absolutely. Yeah, those signs yeah. and messages. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like, like, I know for a fact, we all carry the sixth sense. It's just that some people are more open to it. Some people know how to tap into it for those people who are interested in it. How would you suggest that they, how they tap into it and they start to work on developing a sixth sense that is strong where they can actually increase their ability to open up to the universe and to be able to have, you know, use the different senses that God has given us and be able to embrace the universe through them. Yeah, I think you've touched on one of my all time favorite topics because <laughs> I have, I have this little program that I created a while ago called the sustainable human, the basics. Mm -hmm. And my belief is that just like you said, we are all capable of this. We're all psychic. So how do we touch on that? It's, it's really more about practicing coming home to ourselves. Out, put the psychic notion aside for a moment. Come mm -hmm. home and listen to ourselves every day. Like, in other words, are you hungry? Yes. Are you thirsty? Are you tired? Do you need to use the restroom? Right. Do you not want to go here? Do you not want to go there? And why are these things important? Yeah. Well, because when we can come home and listen to our subtle calling from our internal self and align to that truth, then we could start to delineate the other messages that come. Right. Because those messages that come, those that psychicness, to me, it happens in a space of empty within us, right? Like we have to clear our space to get the messages. But yeah. what also comes up in that empty sometimes is our trauma or the needs that aren't met. So when we just meet our needs on a daily basis, come home and listen, come home and listen, then we'll be able to hear the more nuanced and subtle bits right. of the psychic calling that comes our way. 
So to me, being psychic is an invitation to coming home and loving yourself. It, it really, really is. That's that's an amazing answer. I, I love how, you know, you mentioned that we have to really take time to really go deep into ourselves and understand ourselves and show that special care and, and clear the mind and understand ourselves. So I, I feel like once we understand ourselves as an inner person, we will understand how to utilize all those gifts because to, to utilize the smell and to be able to see images or to be able to dream and be able to get messages, you really have to clear the, the, the garbage, so to speak, and really cleanse the body and open the body to all positivity. Because anyone who's in the field of, of and has the ability, any type of ability to work with the universe and be able to see things, they have to be positive. They have to have positive energy. And in order to have positive energy, you really have to release all that negative energy. So it seems like you have to do work on yourself before you can get to that point where you could elevate your ability to have the, the sixth sense and to be able to be intuitive and so forth. How do you feel about that? A million percent. That is, <laughs> that is exactly, <laughs> that is my belief completely. And because it's so fun to know that, okay, I want to be psychic for a minute, right? <laughs> but, but this takes a lot of work. Let me tell you, like, I, <laughs> you know, in order to feel like for me, the, the messages that the beings are trying to tell me, or I'm trying to interpret for my clients, in order to know the messages, like their language, I got to study it in here. If I want to understand their emotions, I have to make sure it's utterly clear in here. Yeah. If I want to share an unbiased, best I can, neutral, not me response, then I got to get me out of the way. Right. And what A fun way that I love to look at this is, um, you know what a sommelier is? Like a wine, a wine test, a wine master. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so sommeliers, they they get they're the masters, they get paid the big bucks. They, yeah. you know, they're like pretty important up there. <laughs> and, <laughs> and when they master wine, like they drink it and they're like, oh, this I could taste oak and cherry and 1973 and France. I'm like, oh my gosh, all I could taste is red. Like yeah. I, <laughs> I, don't I don't know. But they but they're so wise because they're subtly refined and attuned. Like they just go deeper and deeper and deeper. They get quieter mm -hmm. and quieter. So with that, having said that, they probably don't have like a box of Gallo in their fridge with the keg top. They can't tolerate, <laughs> they can't tolerate the, the lesser refined um, palate, right? Yeah. Same thing with intuitiveness, I feel, is that, you know, a lot of people say, well, you're too sensitive. I'm like, well, isn't that what a Somalia is? Like they mm -hmm. can sense so much. And so you have to have a little courage to yeah. be ultra sensitive, to sense more. Right. And then what happens is you ultimately tolerate less. And so yeah. then your whole world can begin to change. Yeah. Again, an invitation to like a higher way of living. Right. Right. Oh, definitely. Have you ever noticed that when you had become so your your psychic ability had grew so big that you could actually sometimes feel the negativity and that negativity sometimes draws to you and it probably affects you because you're so sensitive to other people's energies. Does that ever play a role when, when if someone has negative energy or you can feel maybe even by passing a house and they could be trauma in that house, but then all of a sudden you might feel all of a sudden, all this, this stress from nowhere, and it might be because you're passing a house that's going through a lot of trauma and their energies is just like flowing into you because you have the psychic ability. You can, you can feel it and whatever is going on or whatever messages or whatever people are affiliated to that, it might be drawn to you. Is that something that happens to you sometimes, or is that something that prone to happen to people who are psychic? It is. Yes, it happens to me all the time. And the more you feel, guess what? The more you feel. And so with that comes a great responsibility. I call it energetic hygiene. And, you know, we wash our hands, we brush our teeth. Well, I, yeah. clear, I clear my energy all the time. And so I've, you know, I really, um, I work with myself being an energetic being first mm -hmm. before the physical. 
And so when I do go out, I know that all these things are there, but I keep my frequency at a certain level because if we're radio signals, then those other energies, yeah, you're like, yeah, there it is. Kind of like, you know, yeah, I smell daisies. Yeah, I smell roses, but I'm not going to go stop and pick them. Right. So I just, I let it kind of waft by me because I keep my frequency at a certain level. And that allows me to learn good, good, good boundaries for sure. And how do you keep yourself at a certain level and not let other things affect how you're feeling and how you are as a person? That is a twofold answer. Uh, <laughs> because I, I will say, first of all, it's very much about understanding um, the parts that bring you joy, right? Like, mm -hmm. so you can keep that frequency really, really going. Yes. However, I always love to say that wherever you go, there you are. So if there are some unresolved feelings in there, kind of throw in a heaping pile of joy on top of them. Right. The mm -hmm. frequency of unresolved is still going to be pinging miles away, like all around in all directions. Right. So, Like you said in the beginning, which I love, is I make sure that I feel the bad stuff first. So right. if I'm yucky about something, I go right there. Mm -hmm. I go right there. I work with it. I deal with it. And I know that it's never going to be over, but I, I'm conscious and aware. Yes. So when I'm conscious and aware and I know I'm taking care of it, then I could bring joy and stay there. But if I have something that I'm pushing down and I'm like, no, I'm just going to like overly, you know, think joyful things to make it go away. It never goes away. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, it keeps attracting because it's, right. magnetic. it's magnetic for sure. Now, you know, so many people are interested in getting readings and, and learning how to be intuitive and, and wanting to know what people on the other side have to say, because when you lose somebody, you know, especially if, if you, you can't, don't have the ability to actually hear, see, smell, figure out the signs, you know, there's so much that you would probably want to say, or maybe some comfort in just to hear certain words come from the other side. And, you know, but as much as, as people are intrigued, people also get scared. And a lot of times people back away. And as much as they want, they want to hear what a medium has to say, for some reason they get scared. But it's, in, you know, it, they react sometimes like it's bad, but it's, it's not. I think it's more a fear of what someone's going to say. But have you ever come across that? And maybe you could explain to people that being intuitive and, and being able to speak to the other side of people who have passed is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because you're connecting to the universe because we're just here on planet. I call it planet boot camp. You know, we, this is just like a learning place, you know, and yeah. there is something on the other side. And unfortunately, we don't know yet. We have ideas, you know, as human beings. You know, and sometimes that, you know, from people who are very intuitive, they will get messages and people, they will say, they will tell them what's ready for them on the other side and they'll have a clearer picture of what's there. But for other people, it's very scary, you know, so maybe you could deep, deep a little into dive deep into that and explain to people about, you know, not being so scared and it's not a bad thing and that it's actually a really good thing. I love that. The invitation to open up um, to the mystery, to the mystery, to the unknown. It's It's been a, how many, like probably lifetimes in the making, right? Like yeah. the dark light, all that good stuff. Um, you know, a piece of that that I will say is I often wonder if the fear of the unknown or the mystery, if we even embrace a little bit with, which I often believe that our, our relatives who pass or our loved ones, they invite us to go listen. So here we are getting called like, oh, we want to go, we want to go. But then we're afraid to go because if we start to listen to that, that's outside of the box. Right. And if that's okay, then what else outside of the box might be okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what else? What else can I listen that isn't in the status quo that might be real? Right. Because it's like a domino effect. If if that is so, then maybe other there are other truths outside of the box that yeah. are so well. And so maybe deeply subconsciously and on, and on a very primal level, we're probably afraid to really, like you said, like even feel outside of the box. But it's what I will say is that 
if these opportunities come, it's because you are ready. Right. To even just open up some like little windows you made in with the box and just to peek your head outside of it for a minute. Mm -hmm. Like you are ready. Just the invitation is coming because you're loved and they yeah. know yeah. and you are ready. Yeah. So give it a shot if you ever get to. Yeah. Oh, I, I definitely agree with you. I, and, and if people want to give it a shot and they're ready, what's the first thing they probably should start doing to get them on their way? Now, we talked a little about that before. You were talking about the program that you created that helps them. But if they're peeking out and all of a sudden they're starting to get these little signs and symbols and they're seeing things and, and they're getting little flickers of the lights or they might see a, a penny or a nickel somewhere, you know, and, and you know, after they have, you know, set a question or whatever the case may, case may be, be, what's the next step? If they really want to take the, the next step of getting enough of resilience to take the next step forward, what should they do? I love that. Okay. Well, <laughs> what I would say too, is that when you are playing with those little signs and you're just kind of watching them, the next step would be uh, to write down what those messages are. And I say that because there's something about okay, I saw a penny today. Oh, I got the butterfly today. Oh, uh, you know, uh, the song came on the radio. Oh, I saw the numbers. Before you know it, you're going to have like a whole list. Because sometimes if, if it's just in our head, we're like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It kind of floats around. There. But when you start to see the list, yeah, you, it's undeniable. And then the next step you could take is really start being a little bit more directed with it. And so then you could say, okay, I see a universe giving me these little signs. Let's try this. And you ask a question and say, I would love a response. However, and I, I love to say, um, don't necessarily put a time frame on it, even though I know sometimes we in human form, we want or need time frame. I feel like though that gets in the way. So just ask and then get empty and then trust. Right. Empty and trust. And then wait, it may come in a dream. It may come through a person. It may come through something you read in the paper, like a little caption. So just work with it in a more directed sort of way instead of just receiving it on accident type of a thing. Right, right. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. You know, there there is many different forms. Um, you hear people talk about angels. Then you hear people talk about spirit guides. And then you hear people talk about people that have passed. And then, right. you know, so... Can you explain the differences of each of them and, and explain the, the different responsibilities or what's the right word, what, what their, their jobs or duties or, you know, because they're each different in their own respect. And so you have, you know, spirit guides. Some people say they connect with their spirit guides and they know their name. Some people talk about how the angels, you know, come to them and they feel their presence and they, they protect them and they can feel them guiding them towards a different path or the right path and so forth. And then we have what we talk about the medium and the people passing over and we get these messages and stuff like that. So can you, for people who are not so um, well, well versed in this area, can you explain the differences and what they each do and then how maybe we can learn to connect with each one of them? Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's keep going because this is fun. Okay. So, um, well, let's start. Okay. So angels, they all have a little bit different. Let's just start with, out with the feelers. Mm -hmm. Angels, guides, and then we'll we'll call the last one loved ones, like loved ones that have yes. passed so we could connect. Okay. So for me, the angelic forms, they are the most etheric. Like they're super light, more light than clouds. Like, yeah. like if you felt a feather kind of going over your skin like that. Spirit guides, a little bit more dense. And so they're they're and they're a little bit more personal. Where angels, they could be personal. They're like, yeah, I'm gonna go hang out with Janine today, or I'm gonna go hang out with Stacy today. But they um to me, they're um they're more like for everybody. You know, they right. don't have that much of a specificness. They know you, they come, they just give you love, they they shift the vibration, they surround you like a blanket. They're just here, they're here to just bathe you in what they have. Yeah. And then the spirit guides for me. They're a little more specific. Like we have, I feel certain guides for our whole life. Mm -hmm. And then we have 
spirit guides that kind of pop in when we're going through a patch. And those spirit guides that pop in and out, they may change, they may alternate. And I could see them in form. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they take on a cultural reference, maybe from another lifetime or an ancestral nod or, you know, or whatever it is that we can understand them the most. And yeah. those guides, like I said, they got, they got your papers, you know, like they're there for you. They're not just going to kind of float around, help everybody. And they, they touch your life, but they don't do things for you. Mm-hmm. I don't feel that, you know, they, because what's the point? Like they, they might like scooch you over a little, but they're not going to go in, you know, because the whole point is for you to self-realize, right? Right. They got you though. They got you. And you'll hear things. You'll, you'll feel things. Oftentimes they'll say things, you know, yeah. things are going to be that way. And then the loved ones who've passed, um, some of those people, beings, hang out as guides. I don't see that very often. I, I just read for a person the other day, though, that um, two days ago, that her husband who has passed he said he's got front row seats now <laughs> for the rest of her life. And typically when somebody's passed, they'll come in, they'll chat, and then they'll go on and do, they have to do their thing. Mm-hmm. But he needed to hang out to learn. Like that was his karma. Okay. And so he was going to be there with her, not to the point where she has no privacy. You know, I just want to make that clear. A lot of people are yeah. like, oh no, are they going to hang out? Like, can I go to the bathroom <laughs> do I have two minutes to myself and it's it's not like that like they're at least the way I see it they're yeah very respectful but they're there watching the core essence of your existence and they to me are the most dense mm-hmm. the most dense and sometimes they're in form sometimes they're not like I said earlier but they're mostly just to come in give you a little love tell you all is well and then they'll be there for you when you pass as well. And spirit guides, are they, were they give a sign to you or were they from previous lives and maybe ne- they have you on their so-called, let's say, list to, to check up on you and they might have, so they, ha- you know, they've been in other lives with you. They know you, they come, they help you, they come back to guide you. Absolutely. The amount of love, like you just talking about it now, it got me a little teary just because I, I was feeling into that space. Like, the, I, I know we feel like we're alone, but we're like here, I'm getting teary. We're so not alone. We're just yeah. so not alone. And it's, it's, uh, it's so much love and support. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's like my little son. If I keep tying his shoe for him, he's never going to learn how to do it for himself. So yeah, they, they are here and yeah so many of them come because they've been with us for lifetimes. Yeah. And then I see so many different guides that some are for many lifetimes. Some are like a newbie with you, you know? Yeah. And then, then, but they they all, they're all here on the same page working on your behalf without a doubt. Wow. I think it's, it's wonderful. um, You know, how, how, people have the ability to connect like this, you know, if we just let them, if we are not so fearful and you have different programs and you were actually talking before the show, I thought was so interested in um, one of the retreats that are coming up. You were, you had, you had work, you're working with this gentleman. He's uh, a scientist. Did you say? Uh, yes, he, yes. He's yep. Yeah, he's a neuroscientist. <laughs> That's and a neuropsychologist, neuropsychologist. Yes. And he was actually um, testing people that had the psychic ability. And when things came through, he was watching how their brains react. Can you tell the audience a little about that? Because when you were telling me some of the evidence that they found, I found it very interesting, you know. Yes. His name is Dr. Jeffrey Tarrant, and he's written a couple books. Uh, His current book on Amazon, um, I was lucky enough to be a part of a small part because we had just met it was a few years ago but he has other psychics in there as well he's been working with for years it's called um becoming psychic lessons learned from the minds of healers readers and psychics yeah and him and i are having a retreat in santa fe new mexico march 8th 9th and 10th and he what we're showing people is how he scans my brain and has scanned it when i would read all these people and you see the pictures um he's got all the different theta waves and beta waves. I 
I'm not even going to pretend like I know what that's his department. <laughs> knows that, but the colors are really cool. And uh, and he's like, oh my gosh, look what happens when you're channeling a reading. The language section of your brain is shut off. Isn't that wild? So like, wild. Oh my god. How does that happen? And then there's a god spot. And then there's there was a piece where I was in clearing, like clearing after an energy kind of yeah. meditation, where the whole um, right side of my brain, I think it was, or maybe the left side, I can't remember, but it was shut down. And he's like, you should be asleep right now. But this one part of my brain that sits in observer mode was awake. So he's like, I, I can't tell you like the way he sees psychics brains working. He's like, something is happening. And we go into these states of meditation that just lets information in that he can't explain because we are kind of in a different state. It's brilliant. And it shows yeah. us that it's just the brain's capacity. It's, and we, we can all go there when we practice. It's just, right. it's a practice, right? But we only use about 10% of our brain. Now, oh. what, you know, so what is all that 90% where, what's happening? You know, what, what is the subconscious and the unconscious? What's going on between that? Is, is some of our psychic ability in that area and it, and it construes into the other part of the brain that we utilize. And maybe that's where the abnormalities, you know, could happen. Yeah. And he sees, he sees the patterns of us psychics and mediums that have practiced this for so long. He's like, oh my gosh, there are definitely these things that happen in those people. He goes, and I also see it because he's he invents these machines and stuff. Yeah. It's so cool that could make those parts of the brains active so we could possibly activate those parts of the brains. And also he's done a lot of work with psychedelics mm -hmm. and he measures the brains of those people. And our brains are doing the same thing as the people who are on psychedelics brains, except yeah. we're not on the psychedelics. So it's a capability. Oh yeah. And I, I love to teach people, you know, it's one thing to get there. It's another thing to sustain it. Yeah. And so I love like, that's my role in it. When him and I come together and teach people is how to keep that going. Cause it's kind of like, you know, you have the spring cleaning in your house and they yeah. get the fridge and the floorboards and everything. And then if they leave, it doesn't stay that way. Right. Like you gotta, you gotta keep at it. And so yeah. again, it's an invitation to a real true, deep committed life to self for sure. Because if you think about it with all the stress and things that go on in life, we can cause our own blockage of our energies. And if we cause the blockage in our energies, then it's going to, it's going to decrease our ability to really connect with the universe because other things, other things from the earth is, is coming into our, our energies and causing stress, which is causing blockages in different parts of your body. Like if you think about the heart, the throat, you know, you think about being grounded on earth and not in having blockage and not being able to really be, be grounded. And then thinking about all these things. And if, if there is blockage, we can't really have that ability to perform and enhance at our greatest ability possible. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's exactly um, pretty much what we were chatting about before is that ability to let ourselves get empty because the emptiness is where we could hear that subtlety. And a great visual for this is um, if you ever watch those shows, like like the shows on hoarding, and that's a real yeah. thing, like all due respect, it's so, it's, I see. Oh, it's a disorder. Yeah. Yeah. It's a disorder. And my heart goes out to them. But when you see their homes, it could be like, let's say a 1200 square foot home and it's packed to the gills, right? Like you can't, like you got to climb in to get like 1200 square foot house, you know? Yeah, yeah. Climb in. And so say like your friend, you know, is with you in this super packed house and it's just like maybe like a half a room down, you might not even be able to hear them. Yes. It's so cluttered. But the minute you clear that out, you could probably hear a pin drop from one side of the house all the way to the opposite end of the house. And when I see people's energy, this is what I see. Mm -hmm. And not, not necessarily physical because the physical is the final stop. Yeah. The, the spiritual, the mental, the emotional bodies, they project 
our physical making. So if we have not gotten clear in our spirit and our will, cleared our mind and our nervous system, because the nervous system is what reads that mm-hmm. you know, subtleties. And if we haven't met our emotional stuff, then that's the clutter that when the messages try to come in, there's no room. There's zero oh. room. And even if it did come in and it was like two inches away, you couldn't hear it because there's so much other stuff that is just not processed. Right. Yet. So just like I said earlier, if we come back home to ourselves and begin to listen to ourselves little by little, mm-hmm. and, I, and don't get me wrong, I get it. You know, I'm a mom, I got two kids and, you know, trying to make a living. And so we could say, well, you know, I got to go to work. I got to do this. Shh, keep going. Mm-hmm. But listen to yourself when you're there. Yeah. If you sit there and you say, you know what? I don't like it here. Yeah. I don't want to go. Okay. I can't change that today, but maybe I'll start doing something so that when I do get up and have to go to work, maybe I like it a little bit better. And yeah. when we start relieving our nervous system that way, everything inside of us starts to come up and out, up and out, up and out. And then we can hear more. Right. And stay grounded, like you said, and be present. Right. And be yeah, but we got to hear ourselves first before we hear anything else. Now, when you see, when you have different energies, do you see different colors? Because some people have, they see different colors, like they, which are kind of like auras around people's body and they have different meanings. Do you ever experience anything like that? I see that around trees and plants and stuff. And then okay. with people, I, I don't necessarily see the rainbowy version, but what I do see are like little um, sparkler pops of color. Okay. So, like a little, like, a, like you had some, a blue, a little bit of blue over here to your upper, my upper left as I look at you. So you're right. <laughs> like just like some blue and then a little bit of pink, but they're more like sparkler pop color type things. I That's what I get to see. Yeah. And what do they represent for people who don't know? For me, they represent, um, because everything is energy first, yes. they represent really our energetic, um, our electromagnetic field, mm-hmm. maybe is a way to explain that in, yeah. a, in a specific term, where um, the, it's just that coming alive, that it's like a merid- the meridian system in your body, which I studied as well, traditional Chinese medicine. You know, it's it's an electrical system that just lights up over here. It's a vitality. Yeah. And so it's just your vital and you're alive and you're pulsating and you're organic. And yeah. so to me, it shows the lack of blockage for mm-hmm. one in that area. If I see that vibrancy. Right. Right. Like I saw for you, like a little blue, a little pink. That's that's vibrant. Like you're not blocked there. Do you know? Right. Yeah. Right. And for out-of-body experiences, have you ever experienced that? You hear a lot of people talk about out-of-body experiences and how wonderful they feel and how some people don't even want to come back when they feel these out-of-body experiences. Do you have any knowledge or have you ever experienced one? Yes, I will. (laughs) If I do too many readings in one day, it takes me a while to come back. And this is another reason why how you and I were talking before, you got to work through your stuff. Yeah. Because the deeper, my experience has been the deeper I want to go with my reading work. I, as yummy as it is when I go over there, I know that I got to come back. So I, I need to come back on my own accord. There's no escapism. My life is hard. I mean, believe me, it's like life just doesn't, it isn't unicorns and daisies. The minute you get this, you're still growing. You're still yeah. working with things. But I've done enough work on myself to know, you know what? Yep, that feels good over here, but time to come home. Mm -hmm. I'm balanced. I'm going to get grounded. Right. And so I have out-of-body experiences every day. Like it's whenever I do readings, I just go and then I come back. But it's really a strong conscious choice. Right. Right. Now, tell me a little about the services that you have, you know, all the different things that you do, because I know you do quite a few things. I want to hear about all the different services that you provide for people. Sure. Thank you so much. I would love to share that. I, um, I do uh, full readings for people. So, if you know, and they could be intuitive or astrological. And I, that includes mediumship. You know, if you want me to chat with somebody who's gone to the other side and I do a lot of work with past lives and I do that with just like regular, like one-off sessions and I have mentoring programs. 
Oh, nice. I have one-on-one mentoring. Yep. And I have a school of intuitive being that is just coming oh, online like to that. help people. Yeah. in a group, more in a group setting. Yeah. The mentoring yeah. is more one-on-one and, um, yeah, I have mini readings and some healing events that happen every solstice and equinox. You can check that on my website. And then we have a big retreat, Jeff and I do coming up in March. March That's 18th. so excited. Yeah. Uh, please keep us posted with that. I really want to learn more about that. Oh Thank my goodness. I, we're so excited. I We can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. We can't even cram all the, we're trying to figure out how we can get all the stuff we want to do into three days. <laughs> I was looking on your on your website and tell everybody your website. Make sure everyone hears your website. Oh, sure. It's JanineKim.com. Uh, J-E-A-N-N-I-N-E Kim.com. And when I was looking at the um with I was looking at the resort and I was looking at all the different things that you had, it looked amazing. I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, oh. You know, I, I was blown away by it. It looks like it's going to be a fabulous time. And and the, I love the topic because I, I get intrigued by science and I love, I'm very deep into the spiritual world and, and learning about it and experiencing it. So those two things combined to me are very interesting because I like to, for me personally, it's very interesting to know what happens to the body when you're going through those type of things, because it feels like your, your whole body doesn't feel the same anymore. It feels like a change is going on. Like something's getting drawn out of you, something you just feeling things from, from different directions. So can imagine what happens to the brain during that time. You know, you're probably spiking all over the place. You know, we don't even really oh, realize it. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. And, you know, I was so grateful that when I met Jeff, because I know, you know, lifetimes in the making, no doubt, like that I could act, just think about that. Like how if somebody who can look at that and say, Hey, look what's going on with your brain. Yeah. And I knew, I knew by way of what I felt, but you know, him being able, he devotes his whole life to this work. So him being yeah. able to take this work and have the courage as uh, somebody in his field, like yeah. the it takes to say, no, look what I found. I mean, hats off to you, Jeff, you know, if you're, if you're listening, <laughs> I mean, seriously, it, cause I know I get the backlash all the time. Yeah. Uh, I was a broker. I was an IPO trader and now I do this and <laughs> my whole landscape changed. So right. he shows everybody, he really shows everybody that it's there. And so that empowers, that empowers. Oh, and so sure. the more that come and listen to it, the more we can see that we're capable of doing it, all we got to do is lean in and be curious and go for it. And, you know, and because there's so many skeptics out there, if you can back it by science, then yes. what? Okay. Yes. Then yes. what? Yes. You, right. have, you know, you, it's like, you can, yeah, there's, there's nothing you can deny anymore. You have science no. to prove it, you know? Mm -hmm. So yep. it's, I'm it's, just the canary in the coal mine. You and I, when we do these things, we're just the canary in the coal mine. Yeah, Meaning we are what everybody else is capable of doing. It's right. Just, it's got just, yeah. Exactly. It's just being, you just, just wanting it. And like you said, the step-by-step, -step, you know, and I like that you could teach people step-by-step -step on, on your, on your programs, on your website, and you have all those things. So if people want to actually learn, they could learn step-by-step -step because most people wouldn't know where to get started, you know? And mo so it, to have someone guide you step-by-step, -step, I think that's yes. great that you're doing that because you can make the process so easy and the <laughs> transformation could be so immense. It's, it's massive. It's, yes. Massive. And what I love to say is that I don't want this to be a place that you go like, oh, I have to, I'm going to go into a deep meditation. I'm going to go do science. To me, it's a it's a state of being. It's, yeah. it's you're in it all the time. Mm -hmm. You just turn it on and off consciously. Hey, what should I do about this? And then you listen, you know, so it changes yeah. uh, the dynamic. So it doesn't have to be someplace you go visit whenever you can, maybe once a month or something. Yeah. It's, it's you, it's you that is empowered to be this way. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, thank you so much, Jeannie, for coming on the oh, show. Before we go, I, I just want you to emphasize, maybe give a couple of takeaways to the audience on, on things that we discussed, because we touched a lot of different things today, but if you'd like to emphasize some important takeaways to the listeners, what would you like to tell them? Empty and trust. Begin your relationship with you by listening to your needs and trusting where they take you. 
Yes. If you don't want to go out with a friend and you're like, I don't know if I could trust that friend might get mad. Well, then maybe that's your answer. Yes. The point yes. is empty and trust. That's the biggest first step you could take. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Jeannie, for being on the show. I loved having you. I hope you'll be back. This has been awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome, Stacey. Thanks for having me. I had a blast. I could have kept going. That was so much fun too. Oh, me too. I, I enjoyed having you on the show so much. I really, I, I love the, every, all the work you do, all the things you do. And I love how you are changing people's lives with, you know, your ability. So it means I hope a lot. so. Here we go. It's <laughs> right. Here we go. Where we go. We just take it every day and we see where That's it leads right. us. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks again, Stacey. Thank oh, you're welcome. You have a great day.